Good morning, everybody. Welcome and Merry Christmas. Good to see you. Pastor Kate is on the road, as you can imagine, in the snow and everything else. So I'm filling in as a moderator, so to speak, uh, in this process. I would, I would wear a stole, but it would clash with my farm boots. So what can I say? A couple announcements for this, uh, this coming week. Uh, in the meantime, while Kate is on the road, uh, please feel free to give me a call or to call the uh, church office or to, to call uh, my wife, Judith. If you need anything through the course of the week, we are in town and available and uh, happy to lend support anywhere we can. And also feel free to call your deacon. Uh, and if you need any help uh, there, we will find somebody to be with you each day of the week as needed. January 2nd begins our new year with a new program. In addition to our worship uh, format, on Sunday evenings, there will be uh, the first Sunday of each month, we will have what we call a new year, new beginnings, Cafe Church, right here in the Manly Room. In the back, it'll be a casual, progressive, informal, worship gathering, a chance to be together and to talk together uh, as a family of faith. Also coming up on the calendar is our Fellowship and Growth Committee's sponsored Pancake Breakfast, January 23rd. You'll see more information on that. It'll be in the CE building following worship. You'll see more between now and then in our newsletter and in our bulletins. On January 30th, our uh, church family's annual meeting will be held following worship right here in the sanctuary. Uh, committee chairs uh, are reminded to make sure that they have their annual reports uh, ready for publication before the annual meeting. And as I say so, I'm looking in a mirror because I chair a committee and I'll have to be doing my own report as well. Uh, are there any other announcements that somebody would like to raise that I may have missed? If not, let's uh, take a moment right here in your pews. Feel free to uh, say hello to everybody. Wish your best. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. hello. Take, a, hello take a couple minutes, and we'll come right back. <laughs> Short and sweet. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, if you'd like to join me with uh, our call to worship, we gather to remember our covenant with God. Today we meet as generations before us have met to renew our promises that bind us to God. And now we will do our opening hymn of Joy to the World. We will stick with the first and the last verses, first and fourth verses. If you'll join me in unison with our prayer for illumination. Eternal God, 
As your word is proclaimed through the scriptures that are read, let us hear with joy the story of your loving purposes from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. Amen. I'd like to invite my boys up here to help with lighting the Advent candles. Grab. We light the first candle, which is peace. Second candle, which is hope. The third candle, which is joy. Fourth candle, which is love. And the fifth candle, the Christ candle. Thank you, gentlemen. And our next hymn is God Rest You, Merry Gentlefolk. first lesson this morning is from Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 through 9. When Abram was 98 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you, after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you 
and to your offspring after you, the land you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan, for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. second lesson this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 18 through 20 and 26. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanan and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. lesson today comes from Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judea. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of 
of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will, and I will be their Lord, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for thou shalt know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity and remember their sin no more. Goodness, it's up here because it was going to be hard to read on my phone. I have the fourth lesson today, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, the decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the wills should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Kyrenes was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. 
While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. They wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people to, to you. It is, it is, it is. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. lesson is from the second chapter of Luke, verses 41 to 52. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in years, and in divine and human favor.
the sixth lesson is from the third chapter of Colossians, verses 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with everyone, and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and through it many become defiled. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves are being tortured. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that 
confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Now, may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you complete in everything, everything good, so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, from this day forward, let us go and declare the good news by all that we say and do. For to us, this child is born. To us, a son is given. Our service shall be guided by his footsteps. He shall forever be our wonderful counselor, gift from God. Everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. Amen.